Everybody ready? Well, thank you for coming. This is to bring you up to bring you up to date on very unusual events, again involving the executives and leadership of Santee Cooper, which as you know, I said some time ago when we were trying to get information for accountability purposes in order to evaluate the company. And we found a enormous resistance against accountability and transparency on behalf of and exercised strongly by the executives and leadership at Santee Cooper. As you know, we are we're in a struggle. We're in a a situation where we have the probably the largest uh, business failing that we've seen in in many years in South Carolina with Scanner and the shutdown of the VC Summer plant, the construction back in July. And since that time, I and others have been trying to get information to determine what the best thing to do is. And at every step, we have been resisted by Santee Cooper. It is a rogue state agency. It is not abiding by the law. It is resisting efforts and fighting against transparency and accountability. Their actions are absurd. They are unlawful. And the most recent one just occurred. As you will remember, some time ago, we learned of, I learned of the Bechtel, the existence of the Bechtel report, which analyzed the construction by Westinghouse, which had gone bankrupt. But it had, previous to that, it had analyzed the difficulties in the construction process and cited cost overruns and a variety of other mishaps and problems. And that was kept secret. And it was only released when I learned of it and required it to be released, and which resulted during that time, as you remember, the resignation of the chairman of Santee Cooper under pressure, Leighton Lord. Also, we learned later that Santee Cooper was paying lobbyists to lobby the legislature against the possible sale of Santee Cooper, which is one option of many. Uh, it's one that I think is a possibility, but we'll know more when we get the facts. But the problem is we're having difficulty getting the facts because Santee Cooper will not give us the facts. They are totally opposed, the executives that are leading that agency, it's a state agency, are opposed to transparency and accountability, and this is just one more example. And as you know, we also, my office disclosed the payments, the bonus payments being made by Santee Cooper for the scanner executives. It's just a, a revolving disaster of unaccountability and obstruction. And now we have yet another example. And that is, as you know, I'd appointed Charlie Condon to be the chairman of Santee Cooper, an interim appointment, which does not require Senate confirmation. That's why it's an interim appointment. Appointed him in July after the legislature had failed to act on the permanent appointment. Well, the next meeting was to be on today. But we learned from the interim director, CEO of Santee Cooper on Friday by telephone that he was canceling or postponing the meeting to be held today. He has no authority to do that. It is unlawful to do that. The schedule of meetings per law was scheduled by Santee Cooper monthly or however often the regular meetings were scheduled by January, in January, by the board voting on when to hold the meetings. Unless you have a board meeting that says you're changing that, then you can't change the meetings. And in order to have a meeting, you must give public notice and all the requirements of the Freedom of Information Act. None of that was done to cancel this meeting. So we had a chairman, a full-fledged chairman, who had been appointed by law, according to law, who had received his commission, who was ready to go to the meeting today, and we received notice over the phone and by letter, which we'll make, you may have a copy already, that that meeting had been, a can, been canceled by the interim CEO of Santee Cooper. 
that is unlawful. It is a violation of, of a right, not only the bylaws of Santee Couple, but also the Freedom of Information Act and possibly other requirements. <clears throat> this is a failure of accountability and transparency. So what I have done, and I'll give you a copy of this, is I wrote to Mr. Brogdon, who is the interim president and CEO of Santee Cooper, asking for the information. By statute and constitution, the governor has the unfettered discretion and authority to receive information from any agency on how the law is being applied and what that agency is doing pursuant to the requirements of the law on its purpose. I asked for that by letter on August 18th, and the statute requires that it be delivered immediately upon request to the governor. This was done on Saturday, this past Saturday, after we found on Friday that they were canceling the meeting. I've not yet received anything. We are going to receive something, but we've not yet received it. But in the meantime, that was, that was on Friday the 17th, that that statement was given to us. On that day also, Moody's Investor Services, a rating agency, you'll have a copy of this as well. In view of all these activities, in view of what has gone on with Santee Cooper, they have now downgraded Santee Cooper, the South Carolina Public Service Authority revenue bonds in their rating report. And they say, and I quote, ruling action, Moody, Moody's downgrade South Carolina Public Service Authority revenue bonds, semicolon, rating outlook negative. This is bad news for the people of South Carolina. Why are the taxpayers, the people who are dependent on power, those who want to come to South Carolina to set businesses, those who want to expand their businesses in South Carolina? This is unnecessary, unnecessary illegal bad news. Why did they do that? They refer here in this August 17 report that approximately $7.4 billion worth of revenue bonds are affected. As you know, 4.2 or 4.3 of those bonds were sold by Santee Couple. The money is still owed. They were sold specifically for all these reactors. Well, the question is how are we gonna pay that money back? What's gonna happen? That's why we need to get the facts. It says, and I quote, the revenue bonds are, are downgraded, excuse me, Moody's Investor Services Service has downgraded the rating on the South Carolina Public Service Authority, Santee Cooper, revenue bonds to A2 from A1, along with Santee Cooper Bank bond rating from A3 to A3 from A2. Concurrent with this rating action, Moody's confirmed Santee Cooper's non-letter of credit back commercial paper program rating at prime-1. Next paragraph. The rating outlook is negative. I repeat, the rating outlook from here forward is negative. Ratings rationale, I'm quoting. <clears throat> this is Moody's. Our rating action today takes into consideration continued unstable governments with certain, excuse me, I'll start over. Our rating action today takes into consideration continued unstable governance with uncertainty about rate setting as Santee Cooper operates without a board chairman. If they had done what they're supposed to do, they have a board chairman, they just, this meeting being canceled or postpone, blocks his sitting at the meeting. Essentially, you have Santee Cooper blocking a gubernatorial interim appointment, which the governor has total authority without any okay from anybody to do. It goes on. It refers to contracted litigation. It goes on. It says, moreover, the fact that Santee Cooper does not have to immediately replace the plan summer addition with a new generation resource limits the potential for new borrowing for the intermediate term as Santee Cooper's debt ratio is one of the highest among U.S. public power electric utilities. Uh, 
it lists factors that could lead to an upgrade. One is, quote, governance that provides certainty to cost recovery is reestablished. It goes on. Factors that could lead to a downgrade. Quote, adverse outcome of central, that's but a capital C, central uh, co-op. Adverse outcome of central litigation, which is pending, that impacts cost recovery and financial metrics. The next thing, factor that could lead to a downgrade. Lack of governance certainty and further political fluence, influence on Santee Cooper operations. I'll read it again. Lack of governance certainty and further political influence on Santee Cooper operations. Well, there, there you have it. We have a rogue agency that from the very beginning of the, the crisis, the financial crisis, is having an enormous effect in Fairfield County, as we know, but also has a ripple effect also has a sends a, a, a message we in south carolina want to grow we need ample stable electric power these kind of unaccountable actions a defiance of law defiance of accountability and transparency uh, are harmful to the to the, the future of our efforts to see that our people have plenty of electric power for all the purposes that are important for our prosperity. So uh, there you have it. I hope to have this information soon. Uh, given the great effort we have had to expend to get the information we've gotten so far, uh, I'm unhappy to say I, I'm not expecting miracles, but at some point these state agencies, and particularly Santee Cup, has just got to obey the law and do the right thing. They have to let the taxpayers and all who are interested, and there are many vitally interested, they have to present the facts and information so we can make important decisions concerning the future of our state. This is a rogue agency that's acting against the law. It's unaccountable. It's not transparent. It's operating against the Freedom of Information Act and known statutes and bylaws, and it's got to stop. So that, that's our story. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Chip? Uh, the government, just to be clear, what exactly are you expecting to give back, Mr. Brock? We are, we are entitled to have from Mr. Brock all correspondence and communications sent or received by any individual or entity regarding or related to the meeting of the Board of Directors scheduled for August the 20th, 2018, to include the delay or postponement thereof. Yes, sir. Did they, they not give a reason as to why they postponed the meeting? Yes, they did. In their letter, they said there was, there was uh, legal uncertainty. There is no legal uncertainty as far as Santee Cooper is concerned. That's not a decision for, for Mr. Brogdon to make. The chairman is, it refers to the appointment of the chairman, the interim appointment of the chairman, which requires no confirmation. Mr. Condon has a, his commission, but Mr. Brogdon, the interim CEO of Santee Cup, says there's, in, there's uncertainty. Well, there is none, but even if there were, it's not up to him to decide. His job is to call the meeting, to open the doors, to have the meeting set up as it was supposed to be today and let those uh, attend. There's no uncertainty. Have you heard anything back from Senator Logan? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. This is, our concern is Santee Cooper. We are, uh, I, this office, has had a, a battle with Santee Cooper getting information that should have been immediately disclosed it should have been disclosed even before we asked, asked for it in fact there are, as you know there are investigations going on concerning scanner and one of the questions there is what was not disclosed that should have been disclosed in that case to the stockholders well we have the same sort of thing going on here what all what is there uh, about the governance the workings the decisions of Santee Cooper that have have led us to this point and how do we get out of this point how do we go how do we go forward that's what we're trying to do it's not cast in blame we want to fix it 
We want to be sure that we have plenty of stable, reasonably priced electric power for the people of South Carolina and all their businesses, new ones and old ones. And the only way to do that is to figure out, because Santee Cooper is a state agency, it's not a private company like, San, like Scanner. This is a state agency. It's the government's responsibility. We have to fix it. And in order to do that, we have to have all the facts. And as I've said, we've had to battle for what facts we've gotten, and now we're having to battle again to the extent that they, they, this rogue agency and the interim CEO has canceled the meeting at which facts would have been forthcoming. Do you have any reason to believe that the members of the legislature asked for the meeting to be canceled? None. This is a, this is a pattern of Santee Cooper's. It has existed from the very beginning and it's time for it to stop. We're all in this together, but the, uh, the, the supply of electric power is one of the most important things that we have in the development of business uh, and, and convenience and strength in our state. That's why the co-ops were created in the first place back in the 30s, uh, to be nonprofit organizations where power could be distributed into rural areas where the big where the power companies could not afford to go. So the the, the reason for Santee Cooper still exists and we must be sure that it is able to move forward. We must be sure that, that the people that rely on power in South Carolina can get it. And here we are fighting with one of our own state agencies for information that should have been provided long before now and now, and we're being resisted at every turn. And, and, and the law is on, is on our side, and the executives, the interim CEO, and, and anyone else should abide by the law and provide that information, and should not be canceling meetings by fiat, unauthorized, unlawful, in a, uh, what appears to be a, an effort to subvert accountability, responsibility, and transparency. It's really hard to believe that a state agency is being illegally defiant in such a way as this. Governor, I was wondering maybe if you'd be a little bit more specific as to what information you're hoping uh, you'll get from this request or information that you were expecting would be well, we, we were hoping to, at the, at the meeting, we were hoping to go into the, uh, uh, an analysis, a discussion of Santee Cooper to, uh, to get information, to get a, a new understanding with fresh eyes and new understanding as to what the situation is and how we, how we work our way out of it. But then this, this, this action comes along and frustrates that. So what we want to know is how did this action come along? Who are the responsible parties? What is the decision? Uh, who, who made the decision? How, how, is, how was this done? For what purpose was this done? It, it just it makes you think that there's something in the record, something in the files, the things that Santee Cooper desperately does not want the people to know. So we want to get to the bottom of it. It's a state agency. This is a state agency. It's semi-independent for uh, various reasons, but it is a, a state agency. It is just, it's outrageous that a state agency is defying the law as this one is. And I was wondering if I could uh, move on to another topic. I was wondering if there's any update with regard to the Helmut Electronics. Have they reached out to your office? Have you had a chance to speak to anybody? I, I spoke with Mr. O'Shaughnessy. We're working around the clock. He is the CEO. As you know, we've, uh, we're doing, we've had more contact with the administration than I'm sure anyone else in the country on these things. And it is, uh, we, we're working on it. It's the hearings that are scheduled uh, on the proposed tariffs in a, a week or two, and uh, Element is uh, preparing for those. Uh, they, have, they have met with Mr. Lighthizer and, and others in the administration, and so have we, and we're working hard. Okay. Y'all, thank you. Thank you.